Hi there, everyone. How we all doing? Welcome to Random Mania, your home for all the randomizers and the round of 16 of the Final Fantasy Randomizer Spring Tournament. I am Game Boy F9. I am joined by Jat2980. How are you doing today? Fantastic. This is, I think, my third bracket race that I've been commentating so far. And so far, these seeds have led to some interesting outcomes. So I'm looking forward to seeing what goes on this time. Yeah, we've got we've got uh, quite a matchup here. We have the reigning Iron Goal heavyweight champion of the world in Spellzap going against the White Mage of Demarine 2, who has defeated in the Swiss rounds Will Bloodworth, Lord Fizzleby, Sirenus, Cheesinator, Zenobian only losing to Sony Wrath in the week six. So three of the people, three of the runners she defeated were are now in the bracket. So um, whew, it's going to be an interesting one. Yeah, absolutely. Demarine just having an absolutely ridiculously hard schedule, getting the numbers two seed well-deserved. And here we have the bracket seed. So bracket seed's a little bit unique with Tri-State Transportation and Town Shuffle on. And I think these two big changes are really what are differentiating these from the Swiss brackets. Yeah, And but... those little changes really change the feel of these seeds. Yeah, those uh, loose items are, it seem to be a little bit harder to come by for some reason or another. So, well, I guess we're going to find out. We're about, uh, I think we're about 45 seconds away from live racing. So, um, ah. Well, let's yeah, go so ahead and we quickly discuss the draft, chat. That's exactly what I was going to say. We have a draft in all of the round of 16 onwards, and here we have a Thief, Red Mage, Red Mage, Thief party. So Spellzap opened the draft with a Thief, Demarine countered with Red Mage, Red Mage, and Spellzap finished with a Thief, to which Demarine cackled in SRL, saying that this is exactly what she has been planning. So we'll have to see what strat she has up her sleeve with this particular comp. Yeah, I mean, that that is one of the key things about Final Fantasy Randomizer, or really any other randomizer. It's like, what uh, what is what do you think your opponent is going to do? What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? And, and how do you apply to that? All I know is the competition has begun. We're going to begin with the White Mage. I saw hardly anything. I saw a nice three over on the Black Mage side and Invis 2 over on the White Mage side. Is that Red Mage learnable? No, so that Invis 2 is going to be Red Wizard learnable, which is a really good sign for these runners as unlike a lot of seeds where you'll see, you know, Knights or you'll see uh, White Mages or Black Mages, these Red Mages are going to have limited magic options. Not only that, Red mages also gain charges at a slower rate than a black mage, so they're going to have to be very conservative throughout the early game with their spell charges. We saw the rod as the vendor item for a very inexpensive 2200 quid. Yeah, uh, we saw Demarine pick up a couple rapiers to get the red mate, red, yeah, red, blah, 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 you know, those people <laughs> ready to start the red wizard. And um, we saw spells that pick up a cabin, so. Yeah, Let's picking see. up some early housing, always a nice veteran move. And yeah, Demarine picked up those rapiers for both of her thieves, which makes me think she might be looking to keep both of them alive for some time. As if she wasn't planning on that, she might just be danning one of them off and not buying any gear for them. We have tons of, hold me, my goodness, we have a max money chest as well as a 12,000 gold chest in the top left here. So I hope that Demarine goes back and picks that up because otherwise that is going to be a very expensive mistake. Oh, well, looks like that's exactly what she's doing. Here we go. And Spell Zap got caught by with a monster, and that's a grand total of 78,000 money. My goodness, that, that that is indeed quite crazy. Yeah, but both runners getting off to a good start here. Lots of money, always a nice thing, especially with these two, you know, two or three mage parties because spells can be very expensive, but this is going to allow them to get lots of save items, lots of pure pots, lots of heal pots, and all the spells they could ever want. As well, they'll be able to pick up some early gold bracelets and pro rings, which are normally for sale in the vanilla game in Gaia, but because we've randomized the shops, could be available anywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, the, some key things that we're going to be looking out for are whether or not life is available. Uh, they already have a good early sweeper but fast and temper may both be locked out and those would be huge as this party could lack some damage going into the late game now thieves actually can do more damage than knights however 
they lack the survivability, which makes getting out of fiend fights quickly even more important because, you know, a second or third skill nuclear or nuke could be fatal. Mm hmm. Well, we're seeing a whole lot of pro rings bought and a whole bunch of silver armor bought. And so th this is a really nice start for our contenders here. And I'm assuming both both players will be picking up a rod shortly. You know, well, we see spells I've already did. And yeah, Demarine's going to get one as well. Yeah, so the rod early, actually, if I was these runners, this is the least, the, like, the thing I would want to see the least. Because those tri-state flags, so for people who are not familiar with the tri-state, that means that there's the same number of loose. There's guaranteed to be three loose in these seeds plus a loose canal. However, normally items are loose, you know, one number of loose divided by number of total items. However, that's not the case here. Those are over 50% chance to be loose, where the canoe or the floater are both over 50% chance to be loose. And that means that it's very likely that you're going to need to be diving into dungeons to be getting that early movement options. And that rod makes you think a deep earth play. And deep earth early is probably the least, the thing you want to see the least. Yeah. Yeah, this is especially with that lower experience count and all that good stuff. And uh, we're going to find out here in a moment. We saw an herb and an oxyale over at the Corneria Castle, those two prizes there. So... Uh, that could be turned in over at the uh, Elfland Castle at some point, right? Yeah, yeah, the herb does that. Um, we see Dem we, have we see a, a little bit of a split here. Demarine going to Matoya's cave, grabbing a mage staff. So that is nice. That's gonna that's a free fire too every time it's used. Even more important than the mage staff is a katana here. So the katana having a higher base damage than the Vorpal, but the same crit rate is a huge pickup for these runners running this double thief comp. At least one katana or the Massa is going to be needed to go through kind of Topher with this type of party. And they found that there. So I did want to quickly touch on something with this party because I was talking about fast and temper earlier. And the reason why um single black mage parties are so popular throughout the swiss rounds you know even if they were going double red black or red black is because losing access to fast and temper can make tofer extremely dangerous so we'll have to see if they can find that in some early magic also crescent lake being in provoca means that that early incentive check was available which was the slab now the slab is not necessarily floater locked like it is in non-town shuffle but it still will probably be a while before we find both melmond and lafayne to turn that in Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see. It does look like Demarine has knocked out one of her thieves, so that's uh, going to be a little bit of a thing here. So, so that basically means that there's going to be increased experience for her three remaining participants. There's the herb turn in, and oh, it's a key. Wow, that's really going to open this seat up. Yeah, so the key always a really nice pickup for early game. They don't have money problems, but that's one of the big things the key can do is allow for you to get a bunch of extra chests to get some extra money, but it also can just let you get some good gear to get out of this early game with. As well, it opens up a number of loose chests, and those free chests will let you find a loose at a higher frequency, and that's always very nice. Now, speaking of slab turner, we did find Melmond, which means that the runners are going to avoid being Lupa Lupa in Lafayne. Loopa, loopa, doopity doo. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> All right. So now, it looks, yeah, so it looks like Demarine is, uh, where's she going? She's going to the dwarf cave. So I guess Melman's going to be a little bit later on, but it's coming. Yeah, uh, this is actually a very unfortunate play for Demarine, and it's not going to cost her a ton of time, but the key being available in um, the elf castle means that. Demarine is almost certainly going to be double dipping that dwarf cave. Well, Spell Zap will be able to clear it all out in one go, at yeah. least for the items that they have currently. Yep, very, very true. So, uh, so that means Spell Zap will have the early advantage as we uh, head on over to the dwarf cave. Let's see what's here. Ten thousand sixty-six. So, <laughs> well, why not? More money. Yeah, this is almost certainly not a going to be a poor seed these runners already have almost all the money they're going to need as one of the big spenders can be vendor items and late magic and the vendor items already been found and you don't really need late magic with red mages so yep exactly 
And it looks like, oh, uh, no, I was about to say, oh, dragon armor, but nobody can equip the dragon armor in this setup. <laughs> yeah, the thieves are laughing a little bit because their most treasured sword is often called, you know, a money stick. Well, in this case, the fighter's most treasured armor is nothing more than a money chest. Yep. Yeah, the the uh, the katanas I like I like to call those the super game changer because some people like to call the vorpal the game changer for whatever reason, but the katana has a higher hit rate, a higher crit rate. I think no, no, it's no, I think it's the same crit rate. But anyway, yeah. it doesn't matter. It's stronger than the vorpal sword. And look at that trap tile for Sarias, twenty seven hundred points, and oh my goodness, spell zap's gonna be off to the races. Yeah, that's a great pickup for Spells App because that's really going to improve the safety of his early game. Uh, getting this nice free um, trap tile as well as Ice 3 looks like it's taking them out in one shot. This is going to be a fantastic way to get into that, at least you know the early to mid teens, which will just increase the safety of something like an early Earth Dive or what could be coming soon if you don't find anything in Dwarf Cave or these few Topher Lock chests, um, a Marsh Cave Dive. Yeah, the only problem is Soria does have Stun Touch, so that will slow things down a bit. I bet Spell Zap's probably going to think a little bit harder to if um, he wants to continue doing that. Yep, wisely sending the Red Mages to the bottom two. Yeah, I like that adjustment. Now, I also actually liked what Spell Zap was doing before, which was leaving his Red Mages at the top. Now, it's a little bit unintuitive because, you know, Thieves are melee classes and Red Mages are um, casters. However... The Red Mages had, have much better armor at this point, so they actually are going to have a higher absorb value. Um, this this adjustment back to the other way around was just to make sure that they're not getting stun touch so that they can get Ice 3 off first. Yep, Spell Zap continuing to knock out those Sorias, already uh, racking up some 10,000 experience points off of this. So, um, which, is, which is really a ton when you think about it, because, like... When you finish the game, you're finishing around, I don't know, typically it's level 24, level 25. Right around that area, you need about 100,000 experience. So 10,000, you're already 10% of the way there. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I think part of the reason why he's leaving here is because A, he knows he's going to get this tile two more times. And B, is that with key item scaling, which means for every key item you get, you're getting 5% bonus experience, it's always better to do your grind a little bit later rather than earlier. That being said, an early, early levels are worth more than late levels. So it's good to get a few here just for safety while you're dealing with these early dungeon dies, which you do find often in these bracket seeds. Uh, Vanny Ban asking in chat, um, is Marsh incentivized and Leggy Starscream correctly pointing out that the answer is no, but I will quickly mention that we do not have an incentivized fiend dungeon this week, or during the brackets at all, and in we do have waterfall incentivized through the robot, we have ice cave and ordeals incentivized alongside our normal key item locations and the fetch quest. All right, a slightly different strategy over on Demarine's side. She's bringing out Bane. Now, is she going to cast Ice 3? Yeah, now she will, and I think she's going to get some really good news here in a moment. Yeah, so Demarine not seeing quite how, you know, squishy these Sarias are quite yet, but I still expect for her to take the fight at least one more time, if not a few more. Uh, no, she actually backs out of that because it was only six hundred money, and uh, and now she has now she's gonna go with Mage Staff with the Ice Three, so uh, she'll probably be off to the races momentarily. Three gold, what a great first chest, and then uh, let's see if not really well, an Ice Sword that's good for the Red Mages. Oh, a ribbon and a white shirt, white shirt casting in two every time it's used in battle. So that is, uh, that's pretty good treasury right over there. Yeah, the ribbon is extremely important there. The white shirt could have been very important if Invis 2 was not available, but with it being available to the red wizards here, not nearly as important as a pickup as it could be. Um, the reason that, you know, I say red wizard here is because it is promotion locked. And the reason I'm saying it's easy is because with a thief party, the tail is so important. You almost never are going to enter Topher without it as the Thief's armor equipability, as well as weapon equips, gets so much better on promotion that it's going to be extremely dangerous to go in unpromoted. So these runners will most likely be diving dungeons or looking for loose if they are just missing a tail, even if they're in go mode. Mm -hmm. And now we do see Demarine indeed grinding those Sorias to, uh, to her pleasure, for sure. Yep, 
definitely going to level 12. She says she's happy with that. And it looks like we've got, well, I don't know. Are we going to go to the Western Keep first? Yes, we are, but which makes total sense. There's three boxes there. There are trap tiles. Yeah, maybe we'll have some more fun here in a moment. Let's see. Yeah, the Northwest, this is a very standard routing of the Inner Sea. Um, what Demarine did was also very normal, just a little bit unfortunate with the key location. But checking Northwest Castle, leaving the Northwest Castle check and the Marsh Cave check to last, and then checking Northwest Castle, resetting out if there's nothing there, to go down to Marsh Cave is a play that we've seen many veteran runners make, which both Spellzap and Demarine are. Um, yeah. Spellzap yeah, well... not even checking the Trap Tiles, because he knows that that Saria Tile is going to be basically good as good as anything he'll find uh, for most of the early game and even into the late game. Having a good Trap Tiles in Temple of Fiends is also very nice because if you need levels after you wipe out of Temple of Fiends Revisited, you can just walk right in and get a few levels, house up, and then go back. Mm -hmm. So right now we just have the Heal Potion of Flame Armor. Uh, is that going to help the ninjas out when they become yes. ninjas? Yes, okay. Yeah, Flame Armor is actually going to be the best armor that they can equip, more or less. Um, mm -hmm. An opal bracelet will have a little bit. Actually, I think it has more more evade, or sorry, more absorb, a lower evade penalty, but not the uh, resistances that the flame armor will provide. So that's a really good pickup for those ninjas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's see what we got here. Looks like uh, looks. I'm guessing Demarine's going to be off to the marsh cave in the uh, northwest castle in a moment. Looks like, uh, it does look like otherwise Marsh Cave was a whammy for Spell Zap, so he'll have to go down to the bottom throws in order to find, uh, I assume, his canal. Yeah, unfortunately, Ice 3, not the sweeper you're looking for against Undead, but that Mage Stick is going to do some serious work. And Spell Zap thinking that that Flame ar Armor is important enough to walk out of the top half, which just goes to show how important, like how you have to play a little bit more conservatively and really value the armor you find with this Thief comp. Mm hmm. All right, so there's Demarine going to head out. She's going to get the bad news in a moment. Spell Zap's going to go ahead and save, and off to the bottom floors. Yeah, without warp or exit, that makes this marsh play a lot riskier, but that early fantastic grind tile really does make this a lot safer because those levels are often what are missing in this early marsh dive. Now, one of these um, undead packs have cremate, and that's been something that's been just the bane of many marsh divers' existence. However, the levels, the MDEF, the ribbon, these things all greatly contribute to making this a lot safer than what we've seen in the past. But scums have death touch, so... <laughs> oh, no. Wow. Oh, and the bottle has been found over in Spell Zap side, so... That is a loose item. There's the canal. So we've already got a loose item down. We've got the canal. Uh, we, I th yeah, this is... Um, and Spellzap's Spells going to head right on out. Yeah, Spellzap's had enough. Um, he's already found kind of two loose items in Marsh and decided that he doesn't want to check the rest. Uh, now, unfortunately... Or I guess fortunately for him, but something that's very scary to think about is if those items had been in the opposite order, where the canal was first and the bottle was in the chest just a little bit further, that could have been extremely bad if spells that made the exact same decision. That just goes to th show with three loose, skipping any chest or diving out of dungeons early can be extremely risky. That being said, you don't really win by opening every box either, so it's all about a balance of risk versus reward, and that is why this is a casino-themed tournament. <laughs> Fair, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, well, we're going to see what what uh, Demarine runs into first. Uh, will she run into the canal first, or will she run into the bottle? That, that order might be very key as to the outcome of this race. Yeah, for sure. So Marsh Cave definitely has some uh, bads. We got Death, Cut, Death Touch, um, Scums, and we have Cremate. I don't know whether which was of the undead it was, but one of the zombie packs had uh, Cremate. So... Not the scariest with the levels they're at, but not easy. But Spell Zap going to get out okay here, and that's fantastic for him. Yep, so right now I'd say Spell Zap's got a two to three minute advantage over Demarine at this point, but it is still very, very early. We only have 16 and a half minutes on the clock, so uh, considering that an average seed in bracket races are about an hour and a half, hour 45, yeah. Yeah, still plenty of time out there, and once again, with these tri-states and no canoe or floater found, uh, that's going to be a really important thing. Is if are those loose 
and who goes into the right dungeon first to get that. Mm -hmm. All right, so Spellzap's still going to head through that canal. Let's see what Demarine does. She's going to go run into some... Oh, very unfortunate. The scums picked her off, and... And there it is. Now now she's down to two players, and very quickly she's going to get out Ice 3 and says, finish this off, get out of here. Um, spells at meanwhile finding Provoca in Melmond, and that is a fantastic find. I think Provoca is the number one location you're trying to find because it has level 2 magic, which Red Mages can learn all of, as well as an item with Bicky. Uh, we do have unsafe pirates on, but that's not that much more unsafe than they are normally, and all it takes is a few tries to get some turn order. Uh, we have two notable spells here. We have Heal 3 and Wall in White Magic, as well as Brack in the Dark Magic. And Brack, very important, actually, with this Thief, because that gives you a way to take out Kraken and Tia before promotion. And that's going to be really important if you want to dive those dungeons early. So Demarine did check out the spike ch chest. It was a whole bunch of Caribs, but uh, she was able to get away. So now looks like I believe she's checked most of the boxes. There wasn't anything of note as we see Spellzap knocking out nine pirates. Yeah, something that's a little bit scary right now is there's a possibility that the key lock chest in the bottom of Marsh have the canoe or the floater because that early key is kind of hinting a little bit that that's, where, that that's something that could be there and neither runner checked that. So we know as commentators that they're both on an even footing here but in their head, there's going to be that nagging voice just saying, check the marsh key locks, check the marsh key locks <laughs> for the rest of the seed if they're having trouble digging out the canoe or the floater. Yeah, well, I guess we'll find out over the next uh, hour, I suppose. Um, looks like Spellzap's heading over to Crescent Lake, also known as, uh, we don't know what town it is, but we'll find out in a moment. Yeah, so this is an interesting play. Um, the bet that Spellzap is making is that this is either Lefane or Gaia, because they do have the bottle as well as the slab, and the slab has already been translated. So if it's one of those two, this is going to be an incentive location. But Spellzap didn't decide to turn in the TNT first, which uh, is also a little bit of a risk, because if that TNT turned into the canoe or something, then this play is going to be, you know, be a hobbit's tail there and back again. But he gets rewarded with Gaia, and is going to get another incentive check here shortly. Yep. That was via the bottle that was just found in the marsh cave. So, uh, but first we're going to check out the weapons and the armor. No, we're just going to check out the armor apparently. And now we're going to find out what uh, the fairy has in store for us today as Demarine successfully escapes the marsh cave. So Moon, Blue, uh, Moon Blaze Wolf is raiding with a party of 16. Welcome to Randomania. We are seeing the 2020 randomizer tournament for the final fantasy randomizer and this is game one in round one of the bracket so you tuned in for a great race um, and spells at picking up the canoe in crescent lake so getting paid off big time for checking that before going to turn in the tnt wow amazing so still wants to turn in that tnt because it's still going to be something useful but here we go we're uh he is going to indeed go back to uh, pick up that tnt where while Demarine's reviving her two thieves and refilling her heal potions, getting ready for her next step. And here we go. Yeah, so... And we get the credits! This, um, <laughs> <laughs> we got the bridge brush, 21 minutes in. Yep. Um, so a quick recap for those people who are just joining us. Uh, both runners kind of navigated around the inner sea. Demarine fell a little bit behind just because she checked dwarf cave before going to the elf castle to get the key so she had to double dip it otherwise had a little bit more trouble in marsh but nothing too major so the runners are within a few minutes at this point and spells that picks up the chime so for anyone who is team sky 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 we don't have the cube yet but that chime does unlock a number of chests that could be hiding the floater and an unforced air over in demarine's side she uh, i believe her thief only had one 30 hit points or something like that I, I don't and she decided to reset all that she was like oh that's be oh that's because that thief is level one isn't it so yeah so she just started over put put the thief to the back so that is going to cost her some time but now that uh 
other thief is very quickly going to level seven. Yeah, and Demarine also making the nice veteran move here of moving the red mages to the back to decrease the chance of them getting stun touched. All right, so she is going to continue to grind for a little bit longer, so until she feels comfortable to explore the rest of the game. Yeah, so something of note here with Spellzap checking out the last non-floater locked town is that if this is not on rack, this is going to be a floater required seed, as although we do have town shuffle on, you still need to light all four orbs, and you cannot get to Kraken without getting to on rack first. Yeah, you're just saying. <laughs> All right, let's see what it is. It is uh, Lu Lufia, and uh, where and Spell Zap's already learned Lufenian, and the prize is the tail. Okay, so don't have to worry about that anymore. Just have to worry about get that floater, which, as Jad has just mentioned, is required. Yeah, at this point we do have Waterfall and Ordeals both available, and yeah, Spell Zap going to go right away and check Waterfall. And of note is that the two floater lock locations are. Onrak, which is going to be required to beat the game, and Elfland, which is another critical early game location because it has both level 3 and 4 magic, and that's going to be especially important for these red mages. Right now, we have not yet seen Fast, we have not yet seen Temper, and we have not yet seen Life or Cure 4. So any of those spells being in Elfland is going to be a huge boon to these runners. Unfortunately, it's just going to even more emphasize how important it is to get the floater, because they're not going to be able to get that magic until they're in the air. All right, so Demarine has completed her grind of Soria's for now, and she's headed off to her next objective, Spell Zap's about to complete the waterfall. The trap tile is... There it is. Wow, five wolves. <laughs> roo, roo, roo. With stun touch. So our, Ooh. <laughs> our fantastic tracker, Danny. 3883 has pointed out to us that fast was level six so there's a three and four chance of that being red wizard learnable um we'll see if someone picked out what slot that was in um it's only the first one. Oh, it was in slot one so that is going to be red completely locked out or sorry that is going to be available to the red wizards and that is super lucky as there was only a single possibility for them to be able to learn it Meanwhile, we have a vanilla cube uh, for the uh, for the robot at the waterfall. So uh, give uh, three cheers to our seed roller, Danny, for rolling a vanilla location there. Yeah, and this is just screaming out for people who are on Team Sky, 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 Sky. Sky known for having tons of chess as well as having great EXP. And with the you know current level of gear, it's going to be a little bit questionable to get through there, but... Still, that's going to be a tempting location to go and check after Spells App clears these incentive locations. Meanwhile, Demering clearing out Provoca, checking the magic, saving quickly just in case, you know, the pirates have something nasty, nasty like damage poison. And we will have to see um, where she decides to go next. Yep, yeah, the pirates are now going, Arr! They fell off the deep ravine or something like that. Uh, <laughs> TNT is acquired by Demarine as a gas dragon falls over and spells Zap side. So now Demarine is going to pick up uh, some materials, some houses. She's picked up those 10 houses. The guillotine is not on spell Zap. Uh, so talk to those bats as much as you want. They are not going away. Yeah, anyone who hates bats should go check out our beta site and turn on NPC guillotine. It lets you talk to these people, and they will disappear, so you'll never have to worry about being bat-blocked again. <laughs> All right, so it looks I'd... like Spell Zap's exiting stage right, or stage down, I suppose. And looks like he is heading toward ordeals, yeah? Yeah, and that makes perfect sense. So... Uh... I think the most interesting play is going to be if Demarine decides to go to Volcano and Ice after picking up that canoe. Uh, one of the key differences for Spells app is that he wanted to go check what the TNT was, but because Demarine's doing it first, she's going to be picking up that canoe and then all of a sudden have Volcano and Ice available to her or alternatively Waterfall and Ordeals. I think the deciding factor for Spells app was that he wanted to get Onrak checked out, but we'll have to see what Demarine does. Um, in the last race I commentated, that decision was critical as the northern part has more incentive locations 
But the southern part, um, ice and volcano, has higher chest density. And that higher chest density with the tri-state floater is more likely to contain the floater. Wow. Is Spellzap, like, perfect so far in pillar selection? I think he's... No. Or did he just get one wrong? Uh... Oh, yeah, he did get one wrong. He got one way wrong. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, ordeals, not much you can do other than guess and check. For people familiar with the vanilla game, this is not a uh, quote unquote, uh, it's not the same as the vanilla game. So it is randomized. So the runners are having to guess and check. Warp qu speeds it up quite a bit, but it is not available to either runner at this point. And Demarine making an interesting play here, going to ice. We'll have to see if this is just a first floor check or if she's going to go deeper. Um, there are three or four distinct. Um, trap tiles as well on the first floor that sh she could be looking for a grind at but with those sarias in temple of fiends locked that's not as big of a deal as it might be in some seed uh lord goober pointing out in chat where was the canoe and the canoe was in vanilla crescent lake um which was lefane which we've already have the slab available for turn in oh no sorry it was gaia yeah. which we have the bottle to turn in and I think you were, I think you meant the Earth Cave, and this was something you mentioned very early in the stream about uh, the rod. You were thinking it might be implying that a really key item is going to be somewhere in that Earth Cave, and I think that's why Demarine is checking checking out this Earth Cave. And also, she's got enough levels that it makes an Earth Cave a little bit uh, more viable play. But she ran into some hydro hydras and some really hard hitting gators and. Oh, there's the floater and a huge advantage now for Spell Zap. Whoa! Wow, so these tri-states just not being tri-states right now. They were both, both of the movement options were just incentivized location, and that is a huge leg up for Spell Zap, as the difference between go moding Earth Cave and full clearing it is huge, and we'll have to see how deep Demarine goes. Now, there absolutely could be something, you know, like a uh, loot loose in Earth Cave, and that would just give a ton of advantage back to her. But Spell Zap with both transportation items before Demarine gets one and making the decision to go north is really paying off for him. All right, so... Uh, all right, Demarine is knocking out the gators. Well, let's see if we've got uh, a really good item here. It is no, she will reset and she'll try it again. Yeah, so that is actually a little bit faster stepwise than going the other way, um, especially if you have a nice long run off the power cycle. So that is why Demarine's making that decision to reset out. Uh, oh, picking up a pro ring. Yeah, well, it's, she's already bought four pro rings, though, because of that really huge uh, chest there at the beginning of the game. Crystal found over at the... Uh, the um, Sarda's cave. So and... crazy as this to say at 30 minutes into the seed, but spell zap is one item from go mode. He is just missing the loot. And at this point, if it's just like a loot in ice, uh, spell zap could be ready to turn on the afterburners here. Now, of course, the loot could be right here at Matoya's cave where he's going to pick up that mage staff that Demery's held the entire time. And the katana, not to mention. Thor hammer, though, was the uh, item for the crystal. So not uh, it's, it's not go mode yet. No, and that's not what Spells F wanted to see, but also not the end of the world. That katana, though, was very much what Spells F wanted to see. As without that, going into Topher without weapons is going to be a critical mistake with this type of party. Um, I'm surprised that they haven't checked the towns yet to go into Elfland, but I think they're just cleaning up the incentive locations first. And oh my goodness, we have a Masa in the Cardia Isles. So Spellzap now has swords, all the swords he could ever need for Endgame. I, 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 I feel like Spellzap's got a hand of four aces right now. It, 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 everything's going his way right now. So <laughs> uh, I, the advantage is right now very significant, and it's starting to look like Demarine's going to need a very difficult... Uh, Temple of Fiends revisited. Yeah, we'll have to see where that loot, where that loot ends up. If it's loose in Earth, uh, this is still going to be very much an even race as the early floater. But if anything, if it's loose in Earth, and specifically if it's loose in Earth below the rod, that is probably at this point going to be the last Fiend dungeon that Spellzap checks. 
And that means that that would be a huge advantage to Demarine. Okay, so Demarine did just find a loose item in an Earth, but unfortunately for her, it was the Power Bonk. So the Power Bonk is an incentivized location, and that's really good information for Demarine. Is that means Demarine knows there's only one loose item left. However, that was not critical. Now, the Power Bonk is even more pointing towards what she needs now, where you said if it's a really tough Topher, because we have not yet seen Temper. And the, if the Power Bonk is the only way to cast Temper and the Power Bonk is loose in Earth, it's very likely Spells at might just not end up getting it. And if we had run into a High Absorb Fiend, that could be really bad news. Ooh, Excalibur was just found. That isn't going to help anybody because that is a Knight-only item. Yeah, not exactly. Uh, Damarine's still really at this point just hoping and praying that there's a loose loot in here. And being uh, ticked off by a bunch of giants and grimps and werewolves is uh, not going to help her cause. And, well, we're going to have a lot of eliminations now with that Ice 3. But we have a promotion over on Spellzap's side. So um, thanks to the floater. Yeah, Spellzap promoting right on time as you start gaining spell charges at level 15. His thieves are both level 14, so this is perfect for him. And I also think that was dictating a little bit of when he decided to, what he decided he wanted to grind his thieves and parties up to on the Surya titles in the early game, because getting not too high into the teens early will allow it to be a faster in the later game, but also make sure that you get all your spell charges before you go into Topher. Not much else over in the Cardi Isles, but um, so he'll have to go off to his next objective, which is going to be up here, and it's going to be the town of uh, Elfville. And we have Nuke, level 3 Nuke for the ninjas and the red wizards, and the advantage continues to grow. Yeah, I mean, Demarine is going to be getting Nuke at about the same time. Like, when she gets here, everyone's going to check Elfland. And, oh, we also have Exit and Life 2 here. So those are really big pickups, um, and those are things that you definitely want to see. It's going to make the Ice Cave a lot faster, but I think the big question here for Spells Up is, is Temper at level 4? Because Temper at level 4 is going to be Ninja learnable, it's going to be Red Wizard learnable, and that's all very important for him at this point. Yeah, we're not seeing Warp. We're seeing Lit 3. Yeah, that's okay, but that, not exactly what he was looking for, so... So we'll yeah, we've see. been talking a lot about you know spells at being in very good position. That's just because their routing has worked out a lot nicer for them than unfortunately Demarine's. But this does the fact that Temper isn't here does give Demarine a bit of an edge there if Topher is especially tough because this could mean that Spellzap has no access to Temper, and that would be extremely bad. Thirty-five minutes on the clock. Spellzap's just looking for that one last item. Demarine still needs to go through the or uh, the castle ordeal. She's got to go through the waterfall, and I think there's something else she's got to do too. So it's uh, quite quite a bit of work to go. But Demarine is about to get her first orb. Yeah, so this is definitely not a bad thing for Demarine. Unfortunately, full clearing Earth did have a little bit of a cost, and also that power bonk was probably in the dead worst chest in all of Earth Cave, as that was kind of the, one of the free chests or the greed chests that spells at might be checking anyways, even if he's not full clearing it. But that being said, an orblet is an orblet. At this point, the key decision for Demarine is going to be she needs to make sure that she checks the northern continent before she goes to Ice Cave and Vol Volcano. As if she stays in the southern continent, she's just going to be moving further and further away from her floater, and that's really going to slow her down. So I like this play from Spells App, checking the Ice Cave before he goes anywhere else, because if this is the loot, it's going to just tell him right away that he doesn't need to check any more locations. All right, there it is. The first orb is down. Lich was pretty much a pushover, and she will have the one orb lead, but uh, she's got to quickly get to her uh, the next objectives and fast, uh, I'm thinking, but... I mean, we'll see. Race isn't over yet. No, I mean, she, she's going to be going to Crescent Lake. She's going to be picking up her canoe. Um, going through Earth Cave is going to take any runner time. So it's not like it's that big of a change. Uh, except for the fact that she opened every chest. But we'll have to see where she goes next. Because the most expensive thing she can do is if she goes into Ice Cave and Volcano. And opens everything there and doesn't find anything other than the incentive location in Ice. 
Ew, that is not a fun trap tile. Two air, air elementals. That is uh, <laughs> not going to work out. But uh, so Spellzap's going to have to try something else. F found a cabin, so that is uh, not going to be helpful. Yeah. Nuke, lit three, exit. All of these things are going to speed up this ice cave dive quite a bit. Yeah, uh, he is going to have to go through the whole thing, though. So, but... Uh, and, and deal with yep. that trap tile there, but he, he's at what level fifteen, so I think he should be able to get through that fine, especially with some heal threes helping out. Yeah, and at least he will only have to go through once, versus if you don't have warp or exit, you have to go through twice. Yeah, that was always the annoying thing about the ice cave, <laughs> having to go through that darn thing twice. <laughs> yeah. As you couldn't promote without going through there first, and Warp and Exit were both locked behind promotion in the vanilla game. Uh, so Demarine about to pick up her canoe, and that's going to be good news for her. And as I said, I think one of the key turning points of the race is about to happen is we see whether she goes west from Crescent Lake into Volcano and Ice and into the river systems, or whether she goes north to Ordeals and Waterfall. We definitely saw a much like a very strong bias towards going north in the Swiss rounds because those incentive locations were just so important and so easy to get. But in the brackets, I'm I'm wondering if that will change a little bit. But it looks like Demarine is also going to be going north, and that is extremely good news for her. Yeah, very very good news. I mean, yeah, she's had a lot of uh, distance to catch up on. We found two more. Uh treasures over in the ice cave it was just a house and a heal potion that is not going to be helpful as he knocks out a great centipede for a thousand points yeah you can only you can always be happy about a thousand points yeah we're gonna uh, knock out a frost frost dying too for almost a thousand more um Demarine looks like she may have gotten a little bit lost i think she was just resetting back to her cabin and forgot a little bit about where she was but I anticipate that this is going to be either a waterfall or a ordeals play. I think because of the fact that she still has an incentive town left, quote unquote, this will also be a waterfall play first, very similar to the route that Spellzap took. And mm -hmm. we have a second katana. Yeah, second katana and four copies of the fun police, the four red dragons <laughs> that we commonly know as the fun police over in Dragon Warrior Randomizer land. And, uh, Let's see if they're doing anything fun. I don't think they're doing anything fun. They're they're dead. That's what they're going to be. <laughs> but yeah. uh, that's actually not a bad grind tile, in fact. That's worth a ton, isn't it? Yeah, 5,000 points. Goodness gracious. They rolled a little bit more HP than would be ideal for a grind tile. Um, as if a single ice three or two took them out, that would be pretty nice. But I think at this point, Spellzap's going to be fairly happy with the Sorias, who would just go down to a single ice three at this point all right so demarine does pick up her tail as bell zap does some more running yeah and i expect exactly the same routing for demarine from this point as bell zap took waterfall two ordeals to the floater to the floater turn in to promotion and then we'll see where she goes from there yeah but yeah she's gonna oh how about a fighter trap tile instead Oh, with very low hit points. Oh, my goodness. Well, they only award 1,500. A ruby pickup. And that is... Is that incentivized? Yes, it is. Yes. No, wait. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> Had to look at the flags so we'll, there. <laughs> yeah, so we'll have to see. Um, this That ruby turn-in is going to be basically immediate. Um, as spells up, it is just one item away from go mode at this point. And okay, so we also did have warp here, so it was a nice pickup to find exit. But once again, that being in slot one there is very lucky, as that does mean that that's available to his red wizards. Absolutely, as here we go. There's that ruby pickup as Demery runs away from the wolves. She picks up the cube. And we're going to have a very satisfied titan. Crunch, crunch, crunch. And now so if this is not... Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I was gonna We're say... going to check out the Forge boxes, gold bracelet, and the crown. More fetch questing. Yeah, so I was going to say, if this does not turn into the loot, uh, I think Spellzap has basically two different um, options to him. He's either going to hit Volcano or he's going to hit Sky. Now, knowing Spellzap, I would assume a Sky play will be coming. 
Um, and that's somewhere where we could see additional route divergence if Demarine decides to go to Volcano after ice. Gonna Picking pick up, up Brack for his ninjas. Yep. I like this play. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Especially for uh, those Tiamat fights and the Kraken 1 fight. Yeah, just shadow him to pieces. I think the with the Masa and the Katana and Fast, there's definitely enough melee firepower. But it's always nice to have a little something, something extra. And there's the loot. And Spell Zap ne now needs to light those four orbs and proceed to win the game. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so that is definitely not what Demarine wanted to see there. Um, of course, she doesn't know it at this point, but that does mean that Spell Zap is officially in go mode, does not need to open up any more boxes. He has, in terms of the kind of quote-unquote toe for checklist, he has a ribbon, he has pretty, he has fantastic late-game swords, he has pretty good armor, and yeah, this play into Earth just makes me think that he's not opening, going to be opening any more boxes. Now, for Spell Zap's sake, you have to hope that he opens the Vampire's Chest, because that Power Bonk is a huge safety item. However, for if you're a Demarine fan, you want him to walk right past that greed chest. Well, let's figure out which team uh, wins out here. We're going to find out about uh, 45 seconds ago. Or, uh, yeah, 45 seconds from now. There we go. I can talk. And uh, as Demarine is off to probably ordeals. Uh, yep, that's where she's going. Yeah, so, so far in this seed just spell zaps routing choices have just really paid off and i mean there's definitely he's been playing basically the odds on plays in most cases but that has just been a big story as well as just you know flawless execution as we would expect from you know our brackets runner to Demarine's side she really has not had any major execution gaffes it's just been a little bit unfortunate the way that the chest that she's opened and that's what's really bit her but you know if there was a loose item in earth we'd be t saying a very different story at this point so Yep, exactly. And now she'll head on over and let's see if she's can correctly guess. Nope, that's not the correct pillar and she'll have to start over. There goes the vampire. Now we're going to find out. Will he? Oh, yes, he does. Oh. oh. Man, everything's just turning up spells up right now. You know, just checking that chest, getting the power bonk. There is a defense sword is a nice to have. A second ribbon is a nice to have. But Everything you could really want for Topher is in Spell Zap's inventory right now. And this is just a ridiculously blazing fast seed for him. Yeah, we only have 45 minutes on the clock, Jack. So <laughs> this is this is kind of uh, pretty crazy here. Yeah, so Demarine um, is about to pick up her floater here. Meanwhile, Spell Zap's going to go light his Earth Orb. And at that point, we're going to be closer to um, parity as we'll get to see a little bit more about what this lead really is. Because essentially, once Spellzap lights this orb and Demarine uh, gets her floater, Spellzap's going to be a few uh, incentive chest turn-ins and ice cave um, ahead. Yeah, when that and that totals up about 10 minutes, you think? Um, probably not that long for a runner of Demarine's caliber, but at least a toe for wipe apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, yeah, that's the very important thing. And it's just all that more, It's it, with spells that picking up that power bonk, it's all that m less likely, to be honest. Demarine picks yeah. up her floater and runs into zombies and ghouls. Ooh, that's a, yeah. Yeah, and if I'm Demarine here, I have to feel a little bit behind. If you're Demarine and you full cleared Earth, you wanted that floater to be like in sky or in sea to make sure that, you know, there's a pretty good chance your opponent didn't just check it right away. But it being in an incentive location just changes all that math. And I expect Demarine to start going fast and taking a few risks here. All right, Spell Zap's heading over to the volcano now. I believe he lit up the Earth orb, is that yes. correct? Okay. Yes, absolutely. So... Yeah, he's skipping all the boxes here. He's just gonna go straight to carry. Yeah, I mean, the reason you'd be opening up greed boxes at this point is for a second ribbon in the defense, but I don't even think Spellzap feels that he needs that. So our bosses are at 230% unclamped, which means that there can be some fairly tricky things, but nothing too crazy. Uh, unfortunately, with this current party, with the Red Mage, Red Mage, 
um, Thief, Thief. The biggest risk is not going to be in gear. It's going to be in levels because your health pools are just not where they are if you have a Black Belt or a Knight. And without Cure 4 and without um, levels, you're just not going to have the health pools. So that's the big risk right now is you're running into you know a turn one nuke or a nuclear nuclear because you're not really going to be able to survive that without just levels. Gear is not going to help you. All right, so here we go with the, oh, well, nope, here we go with the Grey Worm fight, and uh, <laughs> he's going to run. Okay, carry fight, and how's this going to go? Uh, it's going to go by pretty quickly, I think. Nukes and fights, and Danny casts nuke for almost 400 damage, and 224 for about 600, another 103. Goodbye, carry. Have a nice day, as Spellzap now has the 2 to 1 orb advantage. Yeah, so Spell Zap's level's a little low, where he's going to want to be from Topher, but he hasn't done the two late-game Fiend dungeons yet um, in Sea and Sky, where he's going to pick up a few levels for sure. And then there's also going to be the possibility of him doing a Soria grind before he enters Topher. And speaking of Sky, uh, he's going to go to the floating Barrage Tower slash Floating Castle right now. Yeah, so Demarine picks up her Massa. Definitely a nice pickup, and it's good that she did that before she went somewhere else, as that Massa just speeds up everything else. Uh, Mecha Link asking chat, where's the loot at? And the loot was at the end of a large uh, fetch quest chain that started with Ice Cave. All right, so Demarine picking up the rest of the boxes here, the Cardi Isles, and then I'm assuming she's going to, she's going to accept the Flame Sword, and then I assume she's going to promote. Uh, yep, here we go. As Spell Zap knocks out some Catman. Yeah, so we'll have to see how many fights Spell Zap decides to take here, and also if he decides to um, open any boxes here. And the tail goes uh, Demarine's way. Uh, the promotion goes Demarine's way, excuse me. She turned in her tail for the promotion as Spellzav's very quickly heading up the floating castle. Yeah. And Spellzap just feeling very good. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see how many levels he takes before he goes into Topher. I'm expecting him, with the way he's playing right now, that he's just going to take a few fights here, hope to call something on the Bridge of Destiny, and then just go maybe do a few levels on the Soria tiles just to get some levels and then go for that. Wow, this is a very unusual way to count two and two. Normally, people will, normally runners will go north and then go to the east. Well, for him, he's going to the west. And, well, we won't know if he's going south yet. Uh, yep, he's going south. Anything's better than, like, a northwest, northwest, or anything where you're, like, zigzagging. At least if you're going two and two, it's understandable. And get your Bless RNGs out in chat, as Spells app is on the Bridge of Destiny, and a war mech would not be a bad thing. Although it may also not be a bad thing for Demarine's sake if he gets nuked down, as he still does have very low um, HP party members. Yeah, he's got about seven, about five thousand experience in the can right now. Let's see, let's see if he can hang on to a four red hydras as a nice find with uh, average HPs or so. Yeah, but that's going to be some juicy EXP right when he needs it. Getting up to level twenty. Yep. And you definitely want to be like level 24, 25. Well, uh, let's let's take a look at my cheat sheet here. Uh, let's see. For a thief, you want to be like level 28 if you want six hits on the mass immune. Level 23 if you want uh, five hits on the katana. So uh, that's about where he's aiming for. Yeah, I'm expecting him to be aiming exactly for that level 23 cutoff point uh, for both of his thieves. And we'll see if he goes any higher than that. I would expect him to, knowing the way that spells that plays, and knowing the way that these seeds have been rolling, I would expect him to go for a kind of an exploratory Topher dive around level 23 or so. And then if that doesn't work, then he'll get a few more levels if he gets, like, you know, nuked first turn. And spells up gets a turn one Brack, and Tia one is down. So spells up three orbs lit at the 51 minute mark. 
<laughs> Three orbs lit at the 51 minute mark and just one more to go. And he's heading over to uh, Onrak now. That's the only town left to explore. I'm going to go through that long, arduous walk. Demarine, having picked up Exit and Life and all those spells at level 3 and level 4, as Team Tyro is going to get a victory here. All right, there is indeed Onrak, and he's going to eh, fill up on heal potions, of course, and then he's going to wee wee the Quacken. Yeah, this this was uh, spells out basically doing his toe for preparations before he even goes and lights his fourth orb. Makes sense, uh, and that is some unfortunate news for spells out. Cure four at level seven in Onrak, not available for his red mage, but not the end of the world. All right, so Demery needed to scrounge up some money to buy the fast spell, but she got it, so. Away we go into the ice cave where she will pick up her ruby and go through that chain to ultimately get the loot. And then she'll be in go mode uh, about uh, 10, 12 minutes behind spell zap, something like that. Does that sound about right? Yeah, that's probably pretty close at this point. Uh, we have a question draft. Greg Lee Puff, my co-coms last night, asked, who picked Thief and who picked Red Mage? So the draft started with spell zap with Thief. Uh, Demarine followed it up with Red Mage, Red Mage, and Spell Zap finished it up with the Thief. Yeah, very interesting composition, but it's uh, really worked out for, especially for Spell Zap, who's just been finding things left and right and center here, as uh, he's headed down to the final two floors of the uh, Water Shrine. As Demarine's uh, about reached the one third point of the Ice Cave. Yeah, I mean, this seed is going to clock in at just over an hour if Spell Zap um, gets through Topher on his first try. And that's just punishing for anyone who did anything extra. And Demarine's deciding to full clear Earth before doing the incentive checks, which makes a lot of set sense with these tri state, um, with like the tri state floater, is ultimately what is going to cost her here if Topher is something that's not too terribly difficult. Yeah, and Spell Zap deals with the mandatory, mandatory battle of the Wizards of Hags and Reds of Hags, and I say it like that because uh, the mandatory battles are shuffled around in the in um, Final Fantasy Randomizer, but uh, that one cannot be shuffled because that's the B-side of the Pirates. So uh, now you all are more informed. <laughs> so Gregory Puff pointing out in chat, I'm a little bit shocked that Zap has all four up. I think the primary reason that he has all four up is because there's a very good early Saria grind tile, as well as early promotion. So because of both things, plus they have two katanas and a masa, it incentivized having a larger party. Um... Shadow Walker pointing out that Demarine, who's well known for her white mages, uh, has zero on the screen, but it looks like she had a very specific draft strategy going into this with double red mage, trying to maybe, you know, play second level games with her opponents. Yeah, un unfortunately, uh, as of right now, it is uh, not going to pay off because right now she is staring at zero one at this point i mean pretty much and we've said this quite a few times over the last half hour it's gonna come down to topher yeah it absolutely needs to just be a tough topher or else um spell zap has this in the bag but if there is a, a little bit of difficulties in topher especially something that is high absorb you know high hp uh Demarine, a very good player and definitely could catch up All right, and with so that, Spells Orb has four orbs lit at the 55-minute mark. Yeah, isn't that, isn't that uh, amazing? <laughs> that, you know, you, were, you, were, you would expect these bracket seeds to take at least an hour and a half, and, and right now Spell Zap's threatening to finish in just over an hour. This is crazy. Yeah, I mean, the reason well, why these bracket seeds tend to run longer than the Swiss rounds is Town Shuffle, as well as those tri-state incentives. Well, the tri-state incentives both rolled incentive on, and the towns were very friendly. So, yeah, not not much else to say other than that. And that this, you know, the two things that make it difficult just didn't really occur. But, oh boy, no, spells up 
absolutely yeah. lighting the Jets with a 56-minute Topher entry. Yeah, so we um, you notice that Spellzap used five houses there, used the rest of his houses. And the reason is uh, he can more easily access those heal potions. It's much quicker to use those heal potions. Boom, 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 boom. Whereas if he didn't get rid of those five houses, the heal, you would have had to do a little bit extra maneuvering. That's that's part of the game here is menu is uh, inventory management. Yeah, so spells up going in without any additional grinding. I was saying that I was expecting him to take a few more fights in um, Sky, as well as taking maybe a few levels on the Saria tiles. But he's just going to go fast. And I think what he's depending on is the fact that if these fiends roll paper, he's going to get through. And if he doesn't, he's going to have some critical information. So either way, this play is just basically spells up in a nutshell. Yeah, well, that's why he's uh, the reigning he Iron Goal heavyweight champion of the world, and he's been that way for nearly three months now. So, <laughs> I mean, he's he's proven it here today, at least so far. Yeah. Now, I think his party is in very good shape. Like, levels, not the end of the world as you're swinging such good weapons, but one nuke could easily take out this party. And that's the scary thing. Uh, but he's really going with the Ikman Maya strats, you know, thinking that maybe not quite 36 nukes, but at this point, you know, 25 or 26 nukes, th that's going to go a long ways. All right, so Demarine did pick up her ruby. She's uh, actually going to go to uh, Sardis Cave to pick up the crystal, and then she'll go ahead and claim the... Uh... The crown from Titan Strove. Yep, that's exactly what she does. Spellstaff tries to quake. Okay. And a little bit of respect for Lich uh, by casting fast on that uh, one ninja there. And uh, now you're going to cast quake? No, we're going to cast Brack. Broken into pieces. Wow. Spellstaff going for the memes in the brackets. I like it. That, that Lich was 100% just one nuke or one swing away, but... And spells up onto the carry floor. So so far, no major gatekeepers. Um, spells up having two life casters has a ribbon. Well, we still got carry Kraken and Tiamat left. So uh, let's find out what Cracky Crack. Uh, yeah, carry. <laughs> yeah, that that fiend. We gotta go through carry first, and it's gonna start off with a nuke for about eh, not a lot of damage. One fifty. Four hits for one forty four. Lit two from carry. That is one of the weaker. Spells out of those fiends, and wow, that, and carries made out of paper, terminated at 500 ex hit points. Woof. Mean, meanwhile, on Demarine's side, she has just entered go mode as well with that loot. So she's going to be turning on the afterburners and also already has that earth orblet. So three dungeons to go for her. Um, Spells app, though, hasn't run into anything scary in this Topher. As I was saying before, what you're looking for if you're a Demarine fan is a nuke or a double nuclear, because that's going to absolutely wipe this party. Yeah, well, we're going to find out here in just a moment as uh, Demery moves on to the volcano. A little bit of trouble getting away from the lobsters and sea trolls, but uh, Spellzap does get away. Just needs to use some heal potions, get him back up to full, and we'll be seeing Kraken in about uh, 30 seconds or so. Yeah, so we'll have to see if he makes any adjustments. I anticipate he's just going to be, yeah, leaving everyone at the front. These ninjas here are expendable, and he's going pure nuke strats. Wow, all nukes here. Oof, interesting. 150 damage there. It's 320. That's a much better. It's 798 from the Kraken. 12 hits. Oof, and another paper fiend. Goodness. Uh, so, so quickly in chat, Andrew, we were asked how do nuke and nuclear differ? So nuke is a spell, nuclear is a skill. Nuke rolls the same as the spells here, so 200 to 400, while nuclear rolls closer to fade damage. So nuke, the much scarier option. However, in the fiend pool, there is four copies of nuclear, while also, well, only one copy of nuke. And we are about to take on Tia. Yeah, well, I mean, at this rate, this it's going to be... Uh... Oh, well, let's just throw the Brack strats while we're at it. My goodness, and more nukes and... No, we are starting to see a white shirt, I believe. Yep, we are seeing the white shirt to add 40 to everybody everybody's invasion. Here's our first nuke at 187. Here's our second nuke at 142. So only 329 damage so far. And Tiamat hit pretty hard. 309 damage. 
So we're going to go again with another nuke, and that will deal a little bit more damage there. And nine hits for 614. Have a nice day, Tiamat. Yeah, so that is really one of the... As I said, at this point, it's just down to nuke or nuclears on Chaos. And he gets an unrunnable Iron Gall. As you were mentioning before, Iron Gall, which, for those of you who are not aware, is kind of our heavyweight run whatever flags you want and challenge to be you know the king of the tough flags or queen of the tough flags spell zap is currently the reigning belt holder so a little bit ironic getting an unrunnable iron gall right before he enters chaos but now he does enter chaos so he is four thousand hit points or less away from victory and uh the way he's been going he, he Right now, Demarine gonna need Spell Zap to get hit with nuclears and nukes, and it just doesn't look likely right now. But we'll find out. Gonna send uh, one of the ninjas to the back. Gonna send the other ninja to the back. No, just gonna swap the red mages around, and just gonna do a uh, little bit more inventory management. Just want to get this right. And here's the speech. And here we go. Gonna start off with a wall. That means it's it's basically a ribbon. For the remainder of the battle, that is why you cast wall. We're gonna go. Nope, we're gonna start to go start over. Fast on the ninja. <laughs> gonna try brack strats. Why not? And the power of Gwant. Swirl is our opening ability from chaos. There's the brack. That is not gonna work. Power Swirl increases. a little bit scary because it is non-elemental and the ribbon does not prevent any damage from it. Also, bringing those party members down means that even mid to low rolls of nuke will take this party out. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and now we are starting to see some heal threes to uh, try to correct that. And that's a hit 217 damage. So uh, that's uh, perfectly fine for spell zap. Here's another power bonk. And our first swing, four hits for 198 damage. It might be time to start swinging. Yep, that's exactly what he's going to do. 94 damage. No, no hits there. Six hits, six hits. Wow! Chaos was at minimum hit points. And the race is over. And with that, Spell Zap has won against the most paper of all Tophers with an official SRL time of 1 hour, 3 minutes, and 59 seconds. So GG's to Spell Zap. What an incredible race to get through these bracket seeds in just over an hour. Yeah. But One, oh, th that wow. <laughs> wow, that is amazing. It was a squishy, it was a squishy carry. It was a squishy crack and it was a squishy TMI and it was a squishy chaos. That's just, wow. I don't know. Uh, I believe we will be hearing from Spell Zap momentarily in uh in our in the broadcast booth uh, we're gonna talk more about this uh very interesting seed here yeah so spell zap is gonna stick around for an interview he said he'll be here in about a minute uh demarine has declined to interview but is gonna finish this race off i don't know if she, uh, she continued to stream it or not um but yeah that was just you know the most paper of all tophers and when you're at an unclamped seed, and with all those copies of nuclear plus the swords plus fast, uh, that can be what happens. And sometimes the informational dive turns into just a winning dive. And that's something that we've seen throughout the, Sw the Swiss rounds and into the brackets now. All right, we do see Demarine working on her third third orb, which is the air cave, and she advances to level 20. Air cave, I like it. And we are joined in the booth here by Spell Zap. Uh, GG, Spell Zap. Hey, thanks, Chad. So that was a race that we were just in the booth, and every single turn where I was saying, okay, here's a critical decision, you know, which way do you go, where's this going to turn out? We have potentially a tri-state floater, and just every single time it was turning up spells app. It seemed like you could make no wrong decisions in this seed. Yeah, that one was kind of built for me. Um, I usually prioritize incentive dungeons, and uh, that's where where it all was. Yeah, we, we found that throughout the Swiss, prioritizing incentive dungeons has kind of risen to be the, the primary strategy. But with these brackets and those tri-state uh, movement options, I was curious if that was going to change. Now, in this case, you went back to the tried and true, and it absolutely paid off. Um, was that kind of your plan going into this from the beginning? 
Oh yeah, 100%. Um, Demarine is going to probably try to go somewhere that isn't incentive dungeons. Um, so I wanted a little bit of divergence. So I was going to just go straight for those. And, you know, if you, as long as you've got more places to, to go, uh, as far as incentive locations are concerned, uh, you're still making progress in the game. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't think that's going to change my, my, um, strategy here. Awesome. Yeah, that's good to hear. Yeah, no, exactly as you predicted, Demarine did go in full clear earth prior to um, getting the canoe in Crescent Lake, well, Vanilla Crescent Lake. And that was really just the difference in this seed. Um, you both entered Marsh at around the same time. Uh, you had a sl small routing advantage because you went to Elf Castle first. And getting that key before going to trek those two free chests and dwarfs made, means you didn't have to double dip it. So you were out of the inner sea, you know, a minute earlier, maybe 30 seconds. But that was definitely not a major um, advantage or disadvantage. But you got the floater well before, and that was kind of just you know the race at that point. Um, we mentioned that you were going into Topher, just you know a little bit lower level. Was that plan that you know I have a bunch of nukes, I have everything I need, and as long as there's no scary spells, and if there's scary spells, what was the plan going to be? Well, um, information would be good, um, and then if there's scary spells, you can. I mean, if your red mages live, you can bring the whole party back. So I wasn't too concerned about that. Uh, really, the main thing would have been a very like high HP, but also having scary spells, kind of Tiamat two. Um, I thought I probably felt the worst about Tiamat two, but I, I was getting I was just going to continue my information dive or, or rather my first dive and try and win. Yeah, and it, it absolutely turned up turned out for you. And I think we've seen that throughout the Swiss and now these brackets as well, with the scaling not changing. Um, my co-coms, Game Boy, do you have any questions for Spells app while he's I, in the booth with us here? Yeah, I, I, I tip, <laughs> yeah, usually I just let uh, chat uh, do all the, you, you know, my co-commentator do all the questions. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, you pretty much covered it. You know, just everything just coming up aces for you there, Spells app. I, I I have to say that was very impressive. Did you did you think that you were going to finish a bracket seed in sixty four minutes? Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, I was well, um, just sort of riding the wave of the seed and, and decided just to, you know, make a shot at it. And if I go fast enough um, and I wipe, then I have got the Saria's backup. Yeah, and that was exact. I was wondering if you were going to go into the Saria's. You know, just for a little bit before you entered Topher, did you feel ahead at the when you were entering Topher, or did you think Demarine was going to be there as well? You mentioned earlier you thought she was going to mm -hmm. do, you know, a dungeon dive. So, well, the option is either she goes and follows my route, and I might be only a minute ahead, and I don't have time to to grind. Um, I saw that I had all four charges on the ninjas, and really getting more levels on the ninjas isn't going to add a whole lot of HP, to be honest. Or at least not at just a few levels. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't really see a huge difference between going in at 21 or going in at 26. Yeah, the consideration for us, which we were wondering about, was that Katana breakpoint at 23. And that was kind of the, the question that we were playing with. But we also knew that just with the way that you like to play, we had some people in chat calling it a padded and shadow walker informational die. But I also know that you love to do that as well, Spells app. So... It wasn't a big surprise to see you just go for it, and it definitely paid off for you here. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't have drawn it up any better. Yeah, and then so, and, then, and then tack it on with uh, all the all the past fiends being squishy. I mean, wow. I mean, yeah, yeah I was so going to save um, spells on the first two, and then with Kraken, you can't really put any buffing into anybody because you can just lose that party member instantly. So you have the only option in that case is just to nuke, full nukes. Um, <clears throat> Tiamat 2 has a chance to not kill somebody with an attack like you saw. Um, so I felt decent about putting fast into it at least. Um, but you've got a lot of range as far as damage goes before, you know, in, in four party members with nuke. Yeah, and and that that was a nice adjustment, and I I liked the strategies all throughout, and I think you know if that kraken survived a bunch of nukes, you got some low rolls and things like that, that could have been a little bit scarier, but I think that general 
piece of advice is a really good one, especially for newer runners who are trying to deal with crack in the first time. Because I often see, and I've often been, uh, especially with invis charges, like just, you know, casting one or two invises around and trying to get defenses up can be extremely dangerous against Kraken versus going speed and power, getting those nukes out and trying to take him down before he can take you out um, works out very nicely. Well, there's a few, you know, caveats to that. I mean, if you've got three invis casters or maybe two, um, mm-hmm. it might be better just to do that. Or if the scaling's a bit higher, you kind of need to, to, to plan a little differently then. Um, than that. But for, for the brackets flags, I would say that holds true. So going forward, in so this was game one. So if you like the action here, uh, there's going to be game two and potentially a game three later this week. Going forward, how are you feeling? Uh, you don't have to give away all your draft strats here, but yeah. were you happy with the way the draft turned out? Um, do you think Demarine's going to be making some adjustments going forward, or are you expecting more of the same? Uh, you know, I was promised two white mages, uh, but, you know, I liked the red mages. That was a lot of fun. I mean, it was a great party. You can run from anything. Um, but as far as going forward, uh, what you guys are going to need to look for, uh, look towards is where the where the loose items end up. Basically, um, you know, you can see a completely different story next time. So, um, you know, I'm going to approach it the same way, but make sure I've got all of my, um, you know, technical stuff. Uh, pat down and then uh, run it back yeah absolutely i mean this this seed um for those of you who are in chat or may not be as familiar with these runners if demarine had pulled a floater loose out of earth cave we could very likely be seeing the exact same seed but with the names reversed but with um spells at pulling it out of the incentive ordeals first just making all the difference here and then just following it up with flawless execution to get that extremely good time um demarine here onto the carry floor in topher so we'll probably be wrapping up the stream after she defeats Chaos here. Um, yeah, maybe we'll turn attention back over as I don't have any other um, major questions. Spells up, is there anything else you'd like to add while Demarine finishes up Topher? No, you know, I mean, I appreciate the comms. You guys are, um, you know, very good as far as uh, comms. So I appreciate uh, you two coming out and doing it for us. And, um, you know, Demarine's a f- fantastic competitor. So, um, you know, I'm not gonna not gonna get lax or anything, and I hope hope uh, game two goes my way. But I hope it's a good race. Yeah, for sure. I mean, when Game Boy was reading out her schedule and the fact that she went five and one through Game Boy, do you have that on hand again? Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, she defeated Will Bloodworth, Lord Fizzlebeef, Sirenus, Cheesinator, and Zenobian, and then lost to yes. Sunny Wrath in week six. So. so there wasn't a single give me in her entire schedule. And she, you know, just took all of them out one after another until she ran up in the battle of the five O's and just took a single loss. So Demarine, definitely a tough competitor, well deserving of her number two seed. Spells up, of course, no slouch himself. So we're going to have a fantastic next race. And, you know, we'll have to see, is there route divergence again? Is it all going to be an execution battle? Is there going to be a critical wipe or a critical loose item? Um, that's what you're going to have to stay tuned for. Uh, Kraken coming out with Thunder. Uh, Spells app did not say that, although I don't think it would have uh, caused major difficulties for your party, considering Kraken fell over to a light breeze. Yeah, it, yeah, it's uh, kind of, <laughs> kind of pretty funny, I, I have to say. Um, yeah, the, and she's doing, yeah, she's on the exact same uh, battle, uh, battles line as uh, uh, Spells app was, so she will run into that Iron Golem after Tiamat. Yeah, well, it's very common um, for our, especially top runners, to reset. And as Spellzap called it, that was a quote-unquote informational, but also first dive. And something that they can adjust, not only can they adjust their fiend strategies, they can also adjust the step count they're going in on if there's a bunch of ugly unrunnables, especially on something like the sea floor. Um, So you'll see people either burn encounters on the fire floor or take a few steps outside of Topher to change the encounter table up. Um, There's actually a fantastic conversation going on about this in our... Uh, Final Fantasy Randomizer Discord that if you're new and you're interested in getting started here, come check it out and you can get all sorts of great information by many of our top seated runners on you know encounter manipulation, routing, how to deal with a tough fiend, dealing with clamps, all that fun stuff. You can also tune in for our Duckling Derby, get in for the Duckling Bootcamp, which is our beginner um, kind of class 
where you can watch a bunch of seeds, play a bunch of seeds, and talk shop with other new runners of the game to figure out how you can go faster. We have a great welcoming community, so I invite anyone who's interested at all to come check us out. Yep, absolutely. And uh, if you enjoyed this race, well, we're going to do it again tomorrow at 9 o'clock, uh, and I believe that will be on the Random Mania Network's don't drift too far away from Randomania. We are going to have another match right here on this very channel. It will be uh, Will Bloodworth going against Cheesinator, the two people that Demarine defeated during the Swiss rounds. And they will be competing, I believe, is that game one of their series? Do you know? Yes, that's game okay. one of their series as well. Yeah, that's game one of their three-game set. Best of, best of three, I should say. As Here goes Demarine with Chaos right now. We have, we're going to fast a thief, we're going to wall up a red mage, spell zap. Was considering that uh, early on, early on, and uh, just decided to uh, take a different route. There's the wall, and we're going to keep going with more white, white shirts and more nukes. She's just going to go with a direct damage route, and oh, there's the nuke. Oh, Oh, oh wow, man. so Chaos did have Nuke, and that could have been ugly, because it, he had Swirl as well as his first skill. So that could have been a Swirl into Nuke back-to-back -back rounds, and if he got turn order, that could have wiped any party. Yep. But it turned out that uh, Chaos did cast Quad X instead. That's three hits, 208, almost there. And uh, I think one more heal three ought to do it. Uh, yeah, yeah. She's back up to full hit points, so she can absorb just about anything. Four hits, 404, and that is the game. Demarine clocks out 78 minutes and 12 seconds. The official difference, 14 minutes and 13 seconds. So uh, very convincing victories for Spell Zap. I mean, yeah, so she's got to do it again. Demarine's in big trouble, but she's got another chance tomorrow. Oh, yeah, and there's... If you know, anyone who's watching this, this second race, there's no way this first one is going to be telling that, you know, Spellzap's going to, you know, crush Demarine by 10 to 12 minutes. These are both fantastic runners. Now, Spellzap absolutely could do that again, but this is not, you know, a huge skill differential where if they take the exact same route, they're going to end up with a 10 minute difference like it would be if, say, you know, me and Spellzap raced. So uh, GG's to Demarine. Great job finishing out that seed, and we're excited for the next race. So... As we wrap up this broadcast, I did want to just pass it over to Spellzap if you had any final thoughts as we're leaving this broadcast. Spellzap, anything that you would like to say? Uh, no, sorry, I covered it all, but thanks everybody for stopping by and giving us a watch, and uh, hope to see you guys next time. Thanks for coming in for the post-game interview. And Game Boy, any final thoughts while we wrap things up? No, just uh, I just want to uh, thank you for um, excellent commentary, very, very in-depth, uh, so... Really appreciate uh, you helping us out here this evening. Also want to give a shout out to Danny, uh, the tracker extraordinaire, as uh, people in the Final Fantasy Randomizer community would uh, would say. So um, well done to her, as always, for uh, helping us out. Uh, also, uh, one of our uh, newest administrators, in fact, over in that community. So uh, for that note, that is going to be all. So we are going to raid Invenerable. Uh, he is doing um, Legend of Zelda. Uh, no, he's doing Link to Past Randomizer, Super Metroid, that combo randomizer. So you can watch that for a little bit uh, and then come on back here at 11 o'clock Eastern for another round of Final Fantasy Randomizer, Will Bloodworth and Cheesenator. So for our runners, Debra and Spells F, for our tracker, Danny, for my co-commentator, Jet2980, this is me, Game Boy F9. You've been watching Randomania. Please have a great night. Please stay healthy. Good night.